guys. So I wanted to come on, like I was saying in the last video about Kim and uh, Brittany, and discuss this conversation that a divorce lawyer was having on TikTok. And to me, in a way, it, it sort of ties in to what he was saying and what the lawyer is saying, right? So it kind of ties in. Um, and that's why I thought, oh, okay, let me make sure I put this video up as well. But um, before I get into that, I wanted to say thank you to you guys. Today, uh, YouTube sent out, like, I guess they emailed all of the YouTubers this, um, our monthly uh, views and all of that. Now, I haven't been posting as probably as much as I have in the past. Like I told you guys, I'm having issues with uploading. And so I have to go live most of the time when I am putting uh, conversations up. And so um, I'm still getting subs. And so I just wanted to say thank you to guys, to you guys for uh, supporting my channel. New subs, old subs, everyone. Thank you uh, for continuing to support the channel. Um, now, I'm going to play her. Um, she started out wanting to have this conversation for women, naturally, um, as a woman, I guess, and as a divorce lawyer. Um, she was saying to women, the top five professions to avoid marrying, right, or selecting as a spouse or considering as a spouse, I guess, even before you marry the person. And so it kind of opened up that discussion. Now, like, she, well, I'm going to play what she's saying. And because in the video, you're going to hear her say, just because she's saying this doesn't necessarily mean that these people are not capable of staying in long-term marriages, okay? So no one should take it personal what she's saying. But she's saying when she's handling divorce cases, quite often these are the people uh, in these professions that she's finding um, are involved in the cases that she's handling. So I'm going to play what she had to say and I'll come back. I'm in my car waiting for a class to start. So I thought that I would do a quick video about something that popped in my head the other day. Um, when I first started practicing family law 13 years ago, a woman attorney, I think, gave me a statistic about the top five professions of men that women should avoid marrying. And I thought, well, that's a really random thing to, to you know, think about, or how would you even get that kind of um, statistic? But it stuck in my head. And over the course of my career, I've watched my most difficult cases. And shockingly, many of them involve men in these five professions. Now, I want to be really clear before I say this, that if you're married to somebody in one of these professions, it doesn't mean that you're doomed to failure. It doesn't mean that your husband is a bad person. Um, I'm sure there's outliers and any kind of statistic, but just for fun, this is just generally speaking, something that I've observed as being pretty common. And what I notice among these five professions is that they tend to be more narcissistic. They tend to be more controlling. And when I tell you the professions, you're going to see why. And they tend to be far more difficult in dealing with a divorce. They they have kind of a nuke the earth, you know, scorch the earth, how dare you challenge me kind of approach to litigation. So here they are in no particular order. The top five professions of husbands that women should avoid are firemen. I've never really understood that one, but it's on there. Um, police officer, military, surgeon, and pilot. If you look at these professions, what do they all have in common? They all have in common that the men in these professions, they're gods in their profession, right? You're a policeman, you're walking around with a gun, you're walking around with authority. If you're a surgeon, you're walking around the hospital, everybody you know, looks up to you, you're in charge, everybody treats you with respect, and then you know, you come home and all of a sudden somebody's asking you to take out the trash. I think that that's a difficult kind of transition to make. Pilots especially, and when you look at pilots, you cross over to Air Force, military. They're in control of like 150, 200 people's lives at a time. They are treated with a tremendous amount of respect and they have a lot of responsibility. And they tend to be very narcissistic and very controlling. So curious to see if anybody has any um, examples of this. I'm sure there are definitely great ones in these professions, but it just tends to be a theme that I see. So curious to hear the feedback on that.
I debated posting this um, because I know how bad it's going to be when people get this answer from me. Um, but there were so many people that asked um, that I decided after a lot of thought and consideration that I will go ahead and respond to the most asked question from my last video, which is what professions in women should men avoid? And a lot of you thought that those same professions for um, men that I told you to avoid would translate to women, and they really don't. I don't think that there's enough data out there for me to, to comment on that. But the few I've had one military um, female client who was pretty difficult. But other than that, um, I've not seen any correlation in those same professions. But I went through my case list. And if you have a problem with me giving an introduction to this, then just scroll along because I'm about to hurt a lot of people. So I'm going to explain what I have to say. Uh, and you're going to have to listen to it if you want the answer. Um, I went through my case list and there's about 60 cases on my case list. And there are some common professions that I see in women. The most common one that I see is teacher. The second most common is nurse. But those cases are not cases where the female is really difficult or litigious or anything like that. They're just kind of run-of-the-mill cases. Um, the most common profession that I see in the female parties in my divorces, and this is over 13 years of cases. Um, oh, my God. I'm so nervous, is um, stay-at-home mom. Um, hate me. I know y'all are going to hate me, but let me explain why. Um, number one, when you're divorcing a stay-at-home mom, they are paralyzed with fear, and rightfully so, because their whole life is going to change. They are going to have to go back to the workforce. They're going to have to possibly move. Their finances are about to be very different. There's lots of things that they don't know financially about what's going on. And so um, they tend to stick their head in the sand and stall. And so the cases become very contested and very expensive. The second reason that I see that stay-at-home moms end up being the most uh, common profession in a divorce is that I think there's a tendency, and this is completely my opinion, just based on my observations. They tend to focus so much on the children and the husband focuses so much on career that she, they, first of all, they don't feel appreciated by one another, but the husband starts feeling like an ATM and the wife becomes completely focused on the children and they tend to grow apart. So I think that's why it's the most common. That's not hate, just an observation. It's probably my last TikTok. So see ya. Okay. So yeah, you guys see how when I was saying how it kind of ties into what Cam was saying, because she's saying that some of the highest rates of divorce rates are stay-at-home mothers, right? And that's kind of what I was, why I was saying that a lot of these women, they understand, or they should understand anyway, that if these marriages do not work out, that you have to have something to fall back on unless you, you know, unless your hustle is that strong, that you, <laughs> you can move from one rich husband to the next rich husband. Otherwise, you're going to have to figure out how to maintain your lifestyle um, that you may want to um, maintain because oftentimes a lot of these guys, and I'm not just talking about athletes, I'm talking about men in general who are, have stay at home wives. Um, if they plan on moving on to another relationship, then they really don't even want to give the wife, they try to get out of giving the wife anything, right? Or whatever it is the wife is asking for um, as far as child support or to assist with child support or for them. And so you know that you're gonna to have to know how to do something, to step out in in life and do something for yourself. And so that's why I was saying what I was saying as far as him, you know, saying that whole thing about women stay, you know, knowing how to cook and, um, you know, not talking or whatever, you know, and that normally when you're talking about somebody like that, you're talking about, because I would quite naturally, he's not talking to, he's going to gonna have that conversation with a professional woman. And this is why, like I was saying, I feel like a lot of these guys don't go after those women who have their own success because they want to dangle 
um, their success and their money over these women and use that as some type of leverage, right, in the marriage of getting their way from these women. And to me, I mean, just the way these guys have all these crazy conversations, it just comes off like they're playing a lot of games in life anyway. So this is why I'm saying that. I'm not talking about every athlete and I'm not talking about every businessman. Um, and like she was saying, we're not talking about every situation. I'm not talking about every house. Uh, I mean, every uh, stay-at-home mother. I'm just saying, um, I think a lot of these women, a lot of women today, they understand that they have to prepare for something else. If some, you know, in case the marriage do not work out, you can't just go into something like that and not have anything else to fall back on. Uh, outside of relying on this man. So I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about what she had to say about the professions. And I can kind of see it like she was saying, the pilots and um, the surgeons, you know, you have all this staff that's probably looking up to you and people who are giving you all of this extra respect because you are in these professions. Um, and then you have to go home and come back down to <laughs> real life right and so yeah I get what she's saying with that and I think that that also applies with a lot of, of these other people as well right um, the way people may treat you on a studio set it's not necessarily with the treatment you're probably getting at home from your wife or your family um, so I don't know let me know what you guys think about what she had to say and she's saying, basing this on her cases, her caseload, the caseloads that she was examining to put the stats together. So no one's saying that pilots are not good husbands. No one's saying that all military men are not good husbands. So please don't put words in anybody's mouth. Um, she's just saying that when she's looking at the divorce rates, uh, a lot of times, oftentimes, these people are fall into one of these professions. And um, like she was saying, you could kind of see why that would happen. Um, like I was saying as well, the communication part of it, it's, it has to be there um, as well to me because you know, sometimes maybe your wife is not thinking outside of how she sees you at home and how people may see you on the job, right? Um, so I don't know. What do you guys think about what she had to say about the, the group of professions that she named? And she said the top for women were the housewives. And this is oftentimes these guys going out marrying women where they're doing certain things where they don't want those women to no longer do those things, right? And so, um, you know, naturally they're going to, to stay home, right? Unless they decide to go to school. And I think usually that probably comes in time um, when they may decide they want to go to school and do something other than, um, you know, especially once their children get of a certain age, right? You're kids no longer want you around <laughs> at a certain point. And so um, maybe the wife decides to go to school and, and try to do something community wise or, you know, whatever it is. And so, um, yeah, I, I can see how that could cause a problem as well. A lot of these women don't want to walk away from those marriages, even though sometimes the husband is the one trying to leave, right? because they are relying financially on the on these situations. And so I can see what she's saying. I can believe it um, as well, but no one's saying every situation. So please don't put words in her mouth or mine. Thank you. But let me know what you guys think about what she's saying in the um, in her videos. And I'll see you guys in the next um, the next video.